I really don't pay a whole lot of attention to the income taxes or the tax issues. I just, when they tell me to pay them, I pay them. Taxes don't bother me unless they raise taxes. I believe this tax plan, it just dried up revenue. The state's not taking in any money, so certainly something has to be cut. G50. Personally, I think our taxes are all screwed up. That's Kansas Governor Sam Brownback after his first year in office. It was 2012, and the state was emerging from the recession. Since January of 2011, Kansas has added more than 11,000 net private sector jobs in one year. We're a state in transition from a high tax state to a low tax state. A few months later, Brownback would sign the largest and most radical tax cuts in Kansas history, what he called a real live experiment. This is like shooting adrenaline into the heart of growing the economy by taking that tax off a of small business where most of your job creation is. Governor Brownback argued the cuts would eventually pay for themselves by creating jobs and boosting the state's economy. Two main features of the cuts were a 25% decrease in taxes for the highest income rates and completely eliminating income tax on pass-through businesses such as LLCs and S corporations. The first year they were implemented, the cuts resulted in a $700 million revenue loss for the state. Almost all areas of the budget were affected, but Kansas's public schools were one of the hardest hit. Good morning, students and staff. Today is a terrific, terrific, tremendous Tuesday morning. Caney is a quaint, charming little town. It has a population of about 2,500. Almost everybody knows everybody. I've grown up here all of my life, graduated from Caney Valley High School, and I'm a fifth grade teacher. When I first became a teacher, things were going pretty good. I would say that I started noticing back in 2013 of some of the resources that we were starting to lose administration come in and tell us that we needed to use technology, but we didn't have enough computers for everyone to do that. We also cut staff during that year. I mean, we lost staff in every area, whether it be custodial, maintenance, uh, our, our tech director during that time. I mean, we had to cut staff just to make ends meet. I mean, anytime you're cutting individuals that are interacting day to day with our kids, that's a big impact. Number five, Ursula is going to be in a pickle if she can't find her homework. Oh. In a pickle. What does that mean? Pickle. Uh, Benny? I'm in trouble. Yeah, she's going to be in trouble, right? We started cutting Friday out towards the end of the year um, two years ago for about three months. So what's happening to those kids when the parents still have to work? So they're still going to an eight to six job, and those kids don't have a daycare because this was not planned. So who's taking care of the kids? I think as a school system, we let our kids down in that way. It was tough for us to really dig out of that hole. It was making some very, very tough decisions. Our school is our center in our town. My job was to focus on the kids and doing what I am required to do. Just knowing though, as a citizen of our, of our state, yikes, you know, what, what, are, what are we thinking pulling from those resources? Kenny was very supportive of the governor, but as things went down the road, you could definitely see the sentiment begin to change. It's hard not to let your emotions come into something when it affects your kids. As this began to go on and, and on and on and, and did not turn around, it was very easy to see that despite the intent, and I don't think anyone's doubting the intent behind it, um, that it wasn't working. This hole kept growing. Topeka Zoo is actually a city department. We're a municipal zoo. We are funded by city property tax. Tax money is our base. We're very thrifty to make ends meet and make sure that we can take care of the animals and provide the community with something fun. What do taxes mean for me? How much of my disposable income 
goes to somebody else. I think that some of our taxes are a waste of time and some are really good. I am willing to pay more income taxes because ideally it would help facilitate quality of life for the state in general. All right, so I'm gonna climb up to Jackie. She is one of our two-toed sloths. She's actually pregnant and is most likely going to be giving birth any day now. I think the whole thought of the tax plan and cutting taxes and, and the trickle-down effect of that to stimulate the economy was an experiment. And um, now in 2017, we can look back and say, that experiment really hasn't worked very well in terms of um, the economic status of the state. The last two years, the legislature really struggled with how do we balance the budget we have decreasing revenue coming in because of the tax cuts. We have increasing needs uh, for social services, Medicaid expansion, those sorts of things. So it's it's been a real struggle. People kind of existed on this in this mindset that what's on the chopping block next? You know, what are they going to come after next? Depending on how people spend the numbers, you, you hear 10 different versions of how successful or unsuccessful it's all been. One of the things when you start talking about tax policy, I'll use me as an example. I'm a young professional. I have kids in our school districts, but am I really versed on what's happening at the state house, literally several blocks away from my place of business every day related to our taxes? No, and we probably should be. Today, a new poll found that 61% in Kansas called Brownback's plan a failure and only 7% said it was a success. Governor Brownback's approval rating is 18%. As a result of the tax cuts, Kansas's credit rating was downgraded. The state was facing chronic budget shortfalls, and state health care continued to be underfunded. Morning. Good, how are you? Good, good, good. Ready for another fun and exciting day? Stormont is a great hospital. Every decision that is made is made with a strong emphasis on what's happening in our community. We don't have some process where we're screening people out because they don't have the ability to pay. We're happy to do that, but the more people that come to us that don't have ability to pay means we've got to get that from somewhere else. So working in healthcare, in pediatrics, I'm lucky in the sense that I get to know families. I get to hear their stories, I get to learn about the things that are going well for them, and I get to hear about the things that are worrisome to them, insurance being a large one of them. For a lot of kids and families, they depend heavily on state-funded insurance. She seems pretty content and happy, but we want to keep them stimulated. Even if they have private insurance, they rely on one of the state-funded programs as a secondary payer. And without that, those families would be financially devastated. A normal day, she's going to see a whole lot more than just in this room, so. Yeah. My family was one of those families that I would put in that category. I had a son who was born and was diagnosed shortly after birth with what ended up being a terminal illness. I work full time. I, I provide for my family. I have private insurance for my own family. And without the secondary insurance that, that we received through the state, my family would have been bankrupted due to the medical bills that, that we had. The healthcare system only works when people have access to it. And access means they have some form of insurance because that's when they come to, to receive care. When people don't have access to care, they don't seek care. And they have chronic illnesses and they show up in our emergency department. And then we may write off 100% of the bill because they have no ability to pay. Those are the very people who should be on Medicaid. It's part of our social responsibility. Sure. Do I believe that there are people who, who um, abuse the system? I'm sure there are. But you can't try to weed those things out and use that as a, as a policy talking point without recognizing that you're going to hurt families that genuinely do need the, the assistance and who genuinely are doing the best they can. I get very, very tired of hearing that this is about somebody not having to pay for something for somebody else. I didn't choose to be put in that position with my family, and no family chooses to have a child that's sick. So I know that that's kind of a few steps down from talking about official tax policy, but at the end of the day, you can't talk about tax policy without recognizing what kind of impact it's gonna have downstream. Um, and that's, that's where my feelings kind of come from on the subject.
I think that they've raised our property taxes and things way too high. I think that we need to give the business owners the tax break because then they will hire more people, they will make, create more jobs. Cut taxes is great, but then where's the money coming from? To provide the quality of life we're used to, it takes money. A tax cut is good if you use it right. What you gotta get is that even balance. Just personally, I think the downfall of small business is taxes. There are businesses that are fighting to keep these tax cuts alive. Winger Manufacturing is a third generation family firm. They say they've saved $18 million from the tax cuts that's been reinvested in new technology and new jobs. Over 330,000 businesses took advantage of the tax cuts, saving hundreds of millions of dollars. But not everyone saw the benefits. Who doesn't like a tax cut? I mean, my personal beliefs were I was a little bit leery I'm not sure why, um, you know, a business like mine that's a C Corp wasn't necessarily targeted. I probably should know the details of that a little bit more than I do. I really didn't get to take positive advantage of the tax cuts. We do mostly government public sector work. We're a small business and our niche would be in levees and dams. Unfortunately, I've experienced negative parts as far as the cut in spending that's affected in the Kansas Transportation Department. And here in the last three weeks, we've let some people go. In my opinion, it wasn't a catalyst like the governor and others had hoped. The idea of the tax cuts was that the tax cuts were going to stimulate the economy and the revenue would come through that economic growth. It was pretty clear after a couple of years this wasn't working. And instead of trying to correct that situation a lot sooner, people were doubling down on that. And now we're in a situation where it's, it's going to take a little bit of time to fix. on our farm. I mean, it's a part of every business. It's a part of every farm. Um, we have sales tax, we have property tax, we have income tax. It's easy to feel tax from every angle. When they were drafting legislation and really coming up with the tax plan, I think that the focus was very genuine. I'm one of those rare people. I think our state legislatures have our best interests at heart. But from us as a farm, we haven't seen huge impact from that. Speaking just on our farm, I will say that if we were to um, get an increase in cash flow, our desire is to put robotic milkers into our freestall system, which would actually eliminate some labor. So I think that theory of trickle down, while it's novel in its concept, I feel like Kansas has kind of proven that that isn't something that's gonna occur short term. After five years, the tax experiment had not created the economic growth Governor Brownback had promised. And in 2017, the Kansas legislature voted overwhelmingly to restore the tax rates. Embattled Governor Sam Brownback is set to become U.S. Ambassador at Large for Religious Freedom. In late 2017, the U.S. Congress passed President Trump's tax plan. It will be the largest tax cut in the history of our country which has elements that strongly resemble the Kansas experiment. It's the same old trickle-down theory. The policies, in my mind, they the same old trickle-down theories. Cut them at the top and it will trickle down to the bottom. And in the past four years, that have not worked. Quite frankly, I think the experiment failed. We did not see the economic upturn that was projected. We haven't seen this big influx of industry and organizations wanting to relocate to Kansas because of these tax cuts. And that was the projection. I'm, I'm a little concerned that we have the same 
concept at the national level now. It's not completely apples to apples. The national economy is a lot different than the Kansas economy. I get that. I get a little worried though when we place a lot of emphasis on economic growth because of tax cuts. I think that it's unique that we took the chance. Kansas tried something different. I have yet to hear as much of a compelling argument for cutting the taxes as, as I have for, for making sure that we keep um, the right revenue stream in place to make sure that we provide the essential services different families need. I don't think we've seen all the effects from these cuts. We don't know exactly how deep this goes, and so I think that that's the, the biggest thing with it is, is that it's not worth it if it's not paying off. Don't be afraid to pull the plug.